Hey, you! Yeah, you! Put that Zelda down! And especially put that Pretty Girls game collection down and zip up your pants. Just pay attention to me for 15 minutes, alright? We can get through this. May 15th until the 19th. Before we get into it, there is one week left to grab your game book. A Kickstarter book dedicated to the Game Boy, and I am in it. Yes, I've written something for this book, so go check it out. Link in the description. If you love the Game Boy, you will love this book. Garden Simulator. Do you not have a garden if you live in an apartment or on a military base? Or even if you actually have a garden, but you can't be bothered to get off your fat ass and use the lawnmower, but you still want something nice and fresh, well this may be the game for you. Look no further than Garden Simulator. Experience all the trappings of garden owning, salt trails around the cabbage to kill the slugs, boiling water down the ants nest, and who can forget the electrified wiring to keep those damn squirrels away from your bird feed. They should probably just call it Animal Murdering Simulator, that would be more appropriate. And our executive producer Jcross7776 has chosen this as his pick of the week. And if you want to murder wildlife in the name of your own happiness, and if you're in North America and you want to pick up any of the retail games in this episode, please check the links in the description and the pinned comment. You can buy from Video Games Plus and supporters at the same time. Remember they have free worldwide shipping over 80 Canadian dollars and the standard shipping is pretty cheap to the US as well and they're just a really nice company and they support Switchwatch, myself, very very much. And anyone who buys something with our links each week they will be put into a draw to win a $10 discount coupon. And this week's winner is Johansson C. Congratulations, you will get an email from VGP in the coming days or week, and you will get a $10 discount coupon. All right? Trinity Trigger is out in North America already, but this week it's Europe's turn. How are you all enjoying it? Is it the secret of mana you were hoping for? Should Europeans be picking this up this week? Or is it still sealed on your shelf to be played in the next 30 years? Let me know. And our executive producers, they're still excited about this one. Osgolo, Alexander Cato, Issa, Fawn Metaluna, and Robotech have chosen this as their pick of the week. They're still hungry for it. Speaking of hungry, Sushi Bar Express. Bit of a reversal. Sushi Bar Express is finally releasing in North America. This came out in Europe a couple of months back. Obviously no one bought it because it looks like shit. Winter's Wish Spirits of Idu is releasing this week, yet another Otome. And this one's not getting too much publicity compared to their other releases. I mean, I only just got an email from them about a review code, so that's a bit late, a bit of a strange one. Uh, this is in a fictional but historically inspired Japanese setting, similar to the classic Hakuoki. You want to date some effeminate dudes in robes? Then this will be your place to do so. Why is Hakuoki not on the Switch? Um, in English. Doesn't make sense. Come on, Axis. A quick shout out to my friend Pedro, which uh, released at retail last week. Thanks to Cartoon Soren for reminding me. If you like action, you like bananas, you might want to take a look at this if you don't own the Special Reserves one already. And it's Cartoon Soren's Pick of the Week. That's why he reminded me. Are you ready? It's that time of the week again. It is Code in a Box Bullshit! Lego 2K Drive! Actually, that's it. I didn't really need to do all that fancy stuff, but you know, sometimes you just want to dance. Alright, the Little Prince, Beholder 2 is Red Hot Games' latest Switch release. They're getting in the zone again. Now, I'm pretty sure this was going to be released by Badland Games before they went bust. Um, it was pawned off to Funstock, and now it's been pawned off to Red Hot Games. Not the best sign in the world, but I will reserve judgment because it's supposed to be a decent game. Set in a totalitarian state, you work as a government employee trying to work your way up the ladder by scheming and spying basically a real-life work environment. You can pre-order the Deluxe Edition exclusively at redartgames.com with the links in the description if you want to support us and get 10% off with the code SWATCH10. It doesn't like there's going to be a North American version, but I'm pretty sure VGP will get some Peggy copies up on their website too, which may be more convenient for some uh, North American owners. 
owners, customers. Maybe not the deluxe edition though, okay? The deluxe edition is exclusive to RedOutGames.com and it's the same price as the normal edition. Yeah, you get bonus stuff. And our executive producers, totally grateful, and Jennifer M have chosen this as that pick of the week. Severed is finally getting a physical release. This always seemed like an obvious one to get a low print release considering it's a critical darling, but also quite niche and indie. I'm surprised it took this long. But these are the games that Limited Run were actually made for. But now they'll just publish absolutely anything, even titles that don't need them. But whatever, I'm sure this will be a good one, even if it feels a bit too late to be exciting. It's a classic game, I think it was originally a VT game, making heavy use of the touchscreen, in fact I don't think you can play it any other way. So yeah, I think you can only play this in handheld mode on the Switch, just a little warning there. Cube 10th Anniversary is their second game this week, and it's another great indie title, in fact it was the first game I ever made a video about on YouTube almost 8 years ago on my old channel when it wasn't even supposed to be a YouTube thing. I just made it to complement a review I did for a website. But it turns out, YouTube, much easier to earn money. So here I am, 8 years later, still doing the same thing, but hopefully a little bit better. And it's a first person puzzle game, and it's from a small, smallish studio called Toxic Games. It's been out on PC a while, and all the cons- <laughs> Still haven't got rid of my weaselly voice. This is a puzzle game that feels like it's been inspired by Portal, even though the, the mechanics are quite different. From what I remember, this is all about pulling and pushing, and it's pretty good. Weirdly, this is a European Peggy release, limited run, selling a European version. I don't know what's going on, aside from the fact that it's probably cheaper for them, since they don't need to print as many. If they only sell 1,000 units of every game, but print 5,000 of them for a US version, well, you know, 3,000 European versions means less on the landfill in the next decade. And our executive producer, Brent McLean, has chosen this as his pick of the week. It's a good game. Black Book sadly isn't based off the Dylan Moran sitcom about an alcoholic bookseller, but in fact a dark RPG adventure. It looks pretty good. It's got that low poly, low texture, low color style that seems really easy. I mean, it seems really in fashion these days, a bit like Sea Horizon. Yeah, I'm a fan of low poly stuff, but personally, I need some really indecipherable warped textures on there to make me happy. That's the sort of stuff I like, not just this flat color stuff. But this game is highly rated, so yeah, you can pre-order it on the 19th, and our executive producer Parsnip Coffee has chosen this as her pick of the week. Gimmick is Limited Run's fourth game in this week's episode, and it's another retro game brought back to life. A couple of weeks ago they did Trip World, and just to muddy the waters and also make both of these releases just that little bit extra less special, they decided to release them, you know, so close together. I don't know, doesn't make any sense. We've got Gimmick, an old NES game that only released in Scandinavia and Japan. This was a late title that was super ambitious for the time, made by Sunsoft. It's supposed to be excellent for the 8-bit era, and this Switch version comes with some stuff, like a rewind feature for modern gamers who can't wipe their own ass. It has time attack mode for those who have mastered the wipe, fold, wipe, dispose technique, as well as a gallery for looking at stuff. There is a standard edition and collector's edition coming on Tuesday, at which point people will be confused and thinking, hang on, didn't they just do this one? And our executive producer Instacritic has chosen this as his pick of the week. Now in terms of imports this week, again, Japan is still recovering from, you know, Pretty Girls Game Collection 3. And I tell you what, last week with our VGP links, how many Zeldas did we sell? Ding! Zero. How many Pretty Girls Game Collection did we sell? Ten? That's, that just tells me everything I need to know about you, uh, degenerates. But thanks, I, I appreciate your degeneracy. Ellen degeneracy. Anyways, this week's imports, there is only Wand of Fortune R, but that does not have English. Before we get into the community spotlight, I've got something to show off to you. Now, Pix and Love sent me a couple of their collector's editions, and this week I'll be showing off the older one of the two, Baldo the Guardian Owl. you just seen it sitting next to me. Thanks for sending this to me. This is a game that's kind of been through the bushes. It come out a bit ruffled, like a, the Guardian Owl subtitle, but after some self-reflection from the developers and a willingness to make things right, 
what we've got now is a game that you know, is where it should have been. It's had a bit of a redemption. And after all the updates, it also got a physical release from Pix and Love in a standard edition as well as one of these collector's editions. This is a Zelda-like action puzzle game. I, I know we're currently in a drought for one of those. It's, it's been so long, right? Uh, so this is a really nice option. I've been playing it for a couple of hours and I really enjoy it. You can tell it's made by a small indie team some rough edges, especially in like scene transitions, but it is a lot of fun in terms of gameplay. I appreciate the fact it doesn't treat me like an idiot and lets me figure things out for myself. It's a little bit old school, but not like completely obtuse. The dungeon I play so far, really nice, multi-leveled. You have to remember stuff. My God, you have to use your brain a little. I like it. It's got a great art style as well, that cell shaded Ghibli-esque, which uh, caught all of our attentions initially. And it works, it works really well. I quite like this game a lot from what I play so far. Inside the collector's edition from Pix and Love, you get a nice soundtrack CD with 27 tracks on it, that's nice. You get three beautiful double-sided art cards and there is an art book which also includes an interesting interview with one of the developers. It's pretty amazing that this was made by essentially just two people and it started life, at least initially, on the Game Boy Advance. Wow. It's a huge game, very ambitious. I know reviews were really harsh on this because of technical issues at launch and some design choices, but they must have been fixed because I've been really enjoying it and I haven't seen any issues so far. Now, it's not complete on cartridge. Uh, this cartridge comes with the version 1.08 which is where most of the big issues were fixed. Since then, there's been some other content updates, like a bonus dungeon, I think. Uh, and I played the version that's on the cartridge. I didn't update it just to check, you know, what it's like, and it was perfectly fine. I didn't run into any issues, aside from uh, a couple of long load times, like once in a while, especially when booting the game up for the first time and then entering a dungeon, but that's it. It's fine. Overall, really impressed. A nice little package, compact, has the essentials, and if you want to purchase it, check the links in the description. Thanks to Pix and Love for sending this to me so I can show it off to you. I'm, uh, I'm, yeah. It, the wait was worth it. When I originally saw Baldo, like the trailer announcement, oh god, I was so hyped about it. Then it released, and then it got loads of negative reviews, uh, but now they've fixed it, and it's got this nice collector's edition, and it's all turned out all right in the end. If you're looking for a Zelda thing, because there's no other Zeldas around these days, <laughs> you know? Give it a go, honestly, you'll like it. If you like Oceanhorn, like the original Ocean, Oceanhorn, this is like that, but uh, just uh, the a next step up. It's like better, it's the next level. All right, the community spotlight. Adam C sent in this photo showing off the Telltale's interpretation of the Minecraft series, an adventure game rather than a sandbox game, and I heard it's surprisingly good. Executive producer Alex M picked up a game called Zelda alongside a similar type of game, Cat Quest. Okay, maybe not the same quality as Zelda, but still fun. And a double pack, yeah, why not? Executive producer Ozgolo sent in this photo. They didn't get Zelda, but a Zelda wannabe in Iroh Heart, which uh, was a bit elusive when it originally came out. Critics didn't seem to enjoy it much, but it looks alright in the trailer. Carlos S. picked up these games, including Genesis Noir from Serenity Forge. Very artsy-fartsy, but in a good way. I'm just not educated enough to express the game well enough. Executive producer Cartoon Soren picked up something a little saucy with Mugen Souls, uh, the limited collector's edition. This one is a bit pricier than normal because, well, I'd like to say it's because of the contents, but no, they just need to pay Compile Heart some more big bucks. Elissa sent in this photo showing off the two Valis collections. I'll give them props, that's some great box art. Love the retro anime style. Fragidistic sent in this picture of some, uh, some kind of goblin looking over some. Uh, uh, Trek to Yomi Deluxe Edition. Looks really nice, very stylistic. Executive producer God of Resins in this picture of some game called Zelda, I don't know. Alongside Anno Mutation. Uh, they should have really worked on that name. Which is a good game though, at least for the few hours that I played it. Executive producer Instacritic sent in this photo showing off Detective Saiga, which I eventually released the video review, but I did it on VM Paradise instead. It's a pretty decent game, maybe a bit short though. Irina sent in this photo. Thanks for supporting us with the Play Asia links on some of these games. Really appreciate it. They included River City Three Kingdoms, which actually gave me a bit of an idea for a bit more Jordan to do a video about all the games, at least some of them, based on the Three Kingdoms period. 
Although I think only I would be interested in that. <laughs> Executive producer Jcross7776 sent in a picture of something called Zelda. Seems to be popping up quite a bit. Executive producer Jennifer M took advantage of some recent VGP sales. Got in um, these for a good price. Remember, Tokyo School Life is exclusive to VGP. Many people don't realize that. GSB sent in this photo with some East loving. I like it. I swear I'm going to get to East Origin soon. Mickey McFlynn sent in this photo showing a Duck Upon Kingdom, which unfortunately has been outshined by another game that involves a kingdom and crying and stuff. McLaren sent in this photo of something called Zelda. I didn't know Sabrina the Teenage Witch was making a comeback. Also, Trinity Trigger, which uh, only seems to be a collector's edition, which is a bit weird. Needless Dragon sent in this photo showing Tactics Ogre Reborn. I'm still salty over losing my PSP version. Executive producer Robotech sent in this photo of the classic. Oh yes, thank you for the support, I massively appreciate it. Executive producer Fawn Metal Luna sent in this really great Zelda game, Ocean Horn 2. That's a really good one. If you're tired of waiting on Nintendo for the next Zelda game, give this one a try. Top tier sent in this photo showing some great arcade classics, especially at the top there. The first two are actually quite obscure these days, probably because they sold out so fast. Vast Neon sent in this picture with something called Zelda. That's a lot of stuff. It seems like it might be a big deal. Executive producer V, our man in Japan showed off what I've been waiting years for. Spooky Spirit Shooting Gallery. That looks a lot of fun. Visipon picked up these games, the double pack of 80 Days and Overboard. Really great, especially the first one. I think that's quite an underrated game. Alright, let's have a roundup. Manji! Marcos B! Choco Loco James! The One! Gundam Wing Zero! R Luna Radio to Rancid Lil Raven Dude Bro Wankel Rotary Engine Crimson Starvy Peter Clark Remy X Twig E Zero Flux I said Flux Alright, thanks for your pictures Please send them to me on Twitter At So What About Game DM me, okay? Uh, we also have an email address SwitchWatchSpotlight At gmail.com And we have a Discord The server link is in the description Please put your pictures in the submissions section once I open it up. Maybe Tuesday or Wednesday when somebody reminds me. But only send me one picture, okay? I hope you enjoyed this uh, episode of Let's Get Physical. Special thanks, as always, to our executive producers. Dane Wilkinson, God of Resin, Boombox, Brent McLean, Santa Tartaruga, Alexander Cato, Jcross7776, Punky Dooster, Cartoon Soren, Robotech, Z, Raven Knight, Thorn Metal Luna, Parsnip Coffee, Issa, They, Mental Traveler, Offone, Jennifer M, Instacritic, Precision Plague, Kadacha, Osgolo, Totally Grateful, and Alex M. Plus you. Hey, you watching right now. If you watched all the way through, please leave me an owl emoji in honor of Baldo, the Guardian Owls that I just showed you in my spotlight section. Uh, please go check out some of our other stuff. Again, don't have a lot going on last week because uh, I've just been busy working on Kirby and uh, it's pretty much done for the the pa my patrons, my personal patrons. In fact, it might be already up there by the time this video goes out. And uh, yeah, and uh, I don't know what else is going on. There's not been that much going on. So uh, yeah, you don't have to watch some of our other stuff if you don't want to. All right, bye.